Okay, so now let us discuss another type of transformation in our syllabus where we are going to talk about stretching in graph or stretching of graph. Okay, so stretching is the keyword that if let's say they want you to explain the transformation for this part. Okay, so we are having two types of stretching as well. Okay, so let's, let's, let's have a look at huh? the graph of y equals to a fx. So when I multiply a value a, a value, all right, so a value a outside the basic function, then basically this is a stretch, okay, of the graph with the stretch factor a parallel to the y-axis. So this is a vertical stretching. So we can call it as vertical stretching if you want, which is parallel to the y-axis. Okay, so vertical stretching. Alright, so please take note that when they want you to explain, alright, or describe the stretching, uh, uh, this kind of transformation, right, there are a few important keyword that you need to show them. Okay, I think the first one will be the word stretch. Uh, that's definitely the word stretch is the keyword. And then you need to tell them what is the stretch factor and also what is the direction of your stretching. So you can write it as parallel to the y axis. Or another type of strategy will be parallel with the x axis, where you multiply the a inside the basic function or together with the x. Okay, so when you're having the a multiplied inside the function, uh, inside the basic function, right? It is also a stretch, but the stretch factor will be 1 over a. Okay, then parallel to the x axis. Alright, so if you try to compare the stretching in y axis and also the x axis, right, the stretch factor is a bit different. Huh? When I multiply the a outside the basic function, okay, so the stretch factor is a. But when I multiply inside the basic function, multiply a with inside, then the stretch factor is actually 1 over a. Okay, also the, the, the idea is because of very similar to what we learned before, like when you're having something inside the basic function, like let's say I let a x equals to 1, so x is equals to 1 over a. So you can see that the stretch factor is actually 1 over a, not the a. Alright? Yeah. Outside the bracket, okay? So now, uh, again, if let's say we want to describe the transformation, uh, the transformation here, the keyword will be the stretch followed by the stretch factor, what is the value for the stretch factor, and also what is the direction. Is it parallel to the x-axis or y-axis? Okay, when we are talking about the stretching of graph, right, you need to know that if I have stretching of graph parallel to the y-axis, huh, generally it will affect the y-values in your graph, but it will not affect the x-values in your graph. Okay, and then for the x-axis also the same, when you're having a stretch uh, parallel to the x-axis, when you want to sketch a graph, generally it will affect the x-coordinate, but it will not affect the y-coordinate in your graph. Okay, then usually when we're having the stretching, right, our graph, compared with the original graph, will either become longer, slimmer, or shorter, fatter. Okay, so the, the, the shape generally is the same, just that you will either being pulled longer and then slimmer, or maybe being compressed, become shorter and fatter. Okay, then for some of the reference book, they will describe it in the word either using stretching or compressor. Okay, compress means that it becomes shorter and fatter, the graph. And then stretch means that you are pulling it become longer and slimmer. But uh, in our syllabus, we no need to bother about the keyword compress. We will just uh, simplify everything, become stretch. No, no longer your graph become longer, shorter, or slimmer, fatter, right? Okay, we still use the same keyword where it is stretch. So we are not going to use the word compress. All right, so it makes, makes actually the whole... Uh, part here become more simple and straightforward. All right. Okay. So this is uh, something that you need to know lah, for the stretching of graph. Okay. So let's have a look for the stretching of graph. How are we going to link it if let's say they want us to sketch the graph that involves the stretching? Okay. Let's have a look for example 7. I give you the original graph where I'm having x squared minus 1. 
Okay, so for x squared minus 1, right, I want you to sketch the following graph. Lah. So first one, I want you to sketch y equals to 2fx, then y equals to f function, function f2x, then half fx, half is outside the basic function, and also the half is inside the basic function. Okay, so in the notes already, I provide you all the diagram. So all these diagram A, B, C, and D, all the black color graph are the original graph where it is x squared minus 1. Okay, so by right, uh, you should know uh, if let's say I'm having x squared minus 1, right, that means uh, the U shape here, the smallest value here is actually negative 1. And then the x coordinate or x intercept for this point, for this graph will be negative 1 and also 1. Okay, so this is the original graph, y equals to x squared minus 1. Right, so now for part A, I want to sketch the diagram y equals to 2fx. So you can see that I multiply a 2 outside the basic function, right? Multiply a 2 outside the basic function. So according to this diagram, I will we need to know that this value, okay, the value that is affected by the stretching is y because I multiply a 2 outside the basic function. So it is a stretch, uh stretching parallel to the y axis. Okay, stretching parallel to the y axis, and it will affect the y value. So to sketch the transformation graph, I will need to focus on the y value here. This is the y value, which is negative 1. So to sketch the new graph after the transformation, you take the negative 1, multiply with the stretch factor, which is multiplied with 2. So negative 1 multiplied with 2, I get a 2. So that means my new graph, huh, my lowest point now will become negative 2. Okay, and after that, I want to continue uh, sketching the graph, right? Then another two reflection, or oh, sorry, two reference point that you can take is this one. So you can see that this is negative one and this is positive one, right? And both of them are x value. For this example A, we are having stretching in y direction, which means that only affect the y value will not affect the x value. So, if the x value will not be affected, that means that both points here are still the same, which is negative 1 and positive 1. So, now you can see that I try to plot three points here, and it is still a quadratic equation, right? So, that means when I want to sketch the diagram, basically, it will become something like this. Huh? My graph will become still a U-shape, pass through the negative 1, go through the negative 2 for the y value, go up, pass through the 1 again, and then going up for, continue to going up. Lah. So you can see that the diagram, it is still a U-shape, a quadratic shape, a quadratic curve, where the Y value has been affected by taking negative 1, multiply with the stretch factor 2, and you get the negative 2. But the X coordinate value or X intercept value uh, remain the same because the stretching in Y axis will only affect the value of Y it will not affect the value of x. So that's the meaning for the stretching part. Okay, so let's continue further to the second part here. Okay, so this is still original graph, negative 1, positive 1, and also this is negative 1. And now for the second part, I want to sketch the diagram. y equals to f 2x. So you can see that the 2 is inside the basic function. Okay, so for Uh, this is original graph data. Let me label it first. x squared minus 1. Okay, then now I want to proceed with the stretching part. Huh? I want to sketch a graph. y equals to f half x. Also, oh, f2x. So this is the stretching in x direction or in x axis. And then what is the stretch factor for this one? So the stretch factor is equals to half, right? Okay, so the stretch factor is equals to half in x direction. So in x direction means that the x value will be affected by the y value will not be affected. Okay, so affect the x value will not affect the y value. So as an example, for this original point here, it is negative one, right? So when I'm having stretching in x direction, so I have to take negative 1, 
multiply with the stretch factor, so multiply with the half. So I'm having negative half. That means the new point that I need to plot is this one. It will become negative half now. So this particular point here is negative half. From negative 1, become negative half because I take the original value of x multiplied with the stretch factor. Same thing happened here. I'm having 1. So I take 1 multiply with the stretch factor half. So my new x value or x intercept will be half. So this is what we have. Okay. Then the third reference point will be this one. My original point is 0 and negative 1. Again, so for the new graph, after the transformation, I take the x coordinate 0, multiply with half, it is still 0. y value will not be affected, so it remains as negative 1. Therefore, this is still the same point that I want to plot after the transformation of graph. Okay, so after I decide all the points already, you can see that I need to plot these three points, draw a U-shape that pass through these three points. And basically, it will look something like this. Okay, so it is still a quadratic curve. Lah. Okay, just that the, the graph now, you can see that it becomes uh, slimmer. Right? And this is what we have. Lah. Y equals to F and then 2X. That means a stretch in X direction with a stretch factor half. Okay, right? So if you already have the idea how we sketch all these two graphs already, then you can take some time. Okay, maybe you pause the video here. Then you try part C and part D on your own first before I show you the uh, answer or maybe before I discuss it with you. Okay, so now I continue with part C. I hope that you already try it out on your own. Okay, so for part C, so let me plot everything here again. Okay, so for part C, I want to have y equals to half fx, where the half is outside the basic function, and this is in the stretching in the y direction. Stretch factor is actually half. Okay, so since this is actually a stretching in the y direction, right, therefore it will affect the y value, it will not affect the x value. So the y value will be affected will be this one, where you take negative 1, multiply with half, and you get negative half. That means my minimum point now will be here, which is negative half. The x value will not be affected, therefore it remains at negative 1 and positive 1 for the, exist, uh, for the x intercept. Okay, so I want to sketch a U shape pass through this three point, therefore your graph should look something like this. Okay, so this blue color part will be equals to half fx. The stretching in the y direction with the stretch factor half. Okay, then the last one. Okay, so for the last one, y equals to x squared minus 1. For the last graph, I'm interested to draw the reflection, oh sorry, the transformation with y equals to f half x. The half x is inside the function f. Okay, so when you multiply the half inside the basic function, right, it is the stretch in the x direction or x axis with the stretch factor 1 over half. So 1 over half, we are having a 2. Okay, since this is a stretching in x direction, right, it will affect the x value. So first point, I'm taking negative 1, okay, then multiply with the stretch factor 2, so your new point will be negative 2. So originally it is negative 1, I need to plot it at negative 2 now. Okay, then what happened to this point here, the x intercept will be 1, multiply with the stretch factor 2, I'm having a 2. So that means you need to plot the graph that pass through the x intercept 2. Okay, so for this particular value, it is 0 and negative 1. So 0 multiplied with factor 2, stress factor 2, it is still a 0. And the y value negative 1 will not be affected in the stretching of the x axis. Therefore, this point remains at the same minimum point. 
Alright, and after that, I want to connect these three points together and still remain it as a U-shape or quadratic curve. So your new graph should look something like this. Okay, so this purple color graph will be y equals to f and then half x, where the half is inside the basic function. Okay, so for this example 7, basically it shows us very clearly like, how are we going to change the value of x and y so that we can sketch out the graph after the stretching in transformation. Okay, so you need to understand that oh, when you're having multiply a value outside the basic function, it is a stretching parallel to the y-axis with the stretch factor a. If you multiply the a inside the basic function, so it is actually the stretch, stretch uh, parallel to the x-axis and the stretch factor is half. Uh, sorry, 1 over a. Then for the stretching in the y-axis, it will affect the y-value, will not affect the x-value. So the same thing applies for the x1. So if you're if you having the stretching parallel to the x-axis, that means it will affect your x-value, but it will not affect your y-value. Okay, so I show you by using example 7. How are we going to plot all the graph correctly or take the reference point correctly so that we can uh, try to sketch out the correct shape for the transformation of graph that involves the stretching part. Okay, alright. So maybe you can continue to discuss a few more examples that involve stretching. Okay, let's have a look for example 8 in the notes. Okay, so here, for this example 8, basically it is actually, uh, it is a past year question, May June 2020, paper 1, 3, question number 3. I only taken out the question from part B and C. La. Okay, so in each part of B and C, the graph shown in the solid line has equation y equals to fx. Solid line is y equals to fx, that means it is the original graph. The graph shown with, with broken lines is a transformation of y equals to uh, fx. So the broken line is actually the graph after the transformation. Okay, and then what they want us to do now is they want us to state in terms of f the equation of the graph shown in the broken line. So this is what I have for part B. Okay, solid line is the original value, original graph, y equals to fx. Okay, and then this is the broken line, the graph with the broken line. So for the graph with the broken line, you need to write out what kind of transformation is applied okay, on the fx. Okay, so let's try to recall back uh, how many types of transformation we have learned before. So we learned actually translation. We learned about stretching, uh, reflection, right? The previous video is actually reflection and the third type is stretching stretch. So you try to figure out like, what kind of transformation applied, okay, between these three, among these three. Okay, then usually for me, what I prefer to do is that I will still prefer to plot out the reference point, if can. Okay, so if I try to plot out these three points here, basically it's like this, I'm having three and three. Okay, so after the transformation, right, what is the coordinate that I have? So for this one, it becomes 1 and 4. Then this one, it becomes 2 and 2. And the highest point here becomes 3 and 6. What I want to do usually is I will try to compare the values of x and y coordinate if possible, okay, before I can do any conclusion on the transformation. Okay, if I try to compare the red color point and also the green color point, right, you will realize that all the x coordinate are actually the same for all the three points here. So before and after the transformation, you realize that, oh, the value for x are always the same. The only thing different is actually the value of y, where you can see that 2 become 4, and then 1 become 2, and 3 become 6. Okay, so from here, if you want to try and um, observe the relationship between the y value, right, you can see that it is actually two times bigger. So if let's, let's say the like original y is two, after the transformation, it becomes four. If the original value y is one, after the transformation, it is two. 
Same thing happened for the last point here. Original value y is 3. After the transformation, it becomes 6. All right, so I think for this comparison, right, you can see very clearly that the graph after transformation, right, the value is actually, or the function is actually 2fx. 2 times of the original fx, where it is a stretching in the y direction, okay, by uh, with the stretch factor 2. Because by using the stretch factor 2, if I take 2, multiply the original value for y, I will get what we have uh, in the broken line, the coordinate of the broken line. Okay, so this is how we uh, decide the type of transformation involved in the graph. Okay, right? So from here, I can see very clearly value of x is not affected, but only the value of y are affected. Therefore, it is very likely related to stretch. And then after you suspect that it is related to stretch, then you try to compare what's the relationship between all the value of y. So you can see that they are double of the original value. Okay, the, the transform y is actually double from the original value y. So from here, I will know that it is actually a stretch with the stretch factor 2 in the y-axis. Okay, so this is one way how we try to figure out is we try to compare the reference point from the original graph and also the transformation, the graph after the transformation. Okay, so for this particular question, right? Okay, so... Um, I don't know how you think about this question, but I think that a lot of students, they will, they see that, oh, the graph uh, is, seems like moving from a lower point to a higher point, right? So they might assume, they actually might assume that this is a translation. Okay, but you need to know, after you compare the x value and also the y value, right? You realize that it is actually not a translation, so it is actually a simple stretch transformation only. So it looks like translation, but it is not. So you need to try to um, convince yourself uh, which is the correct type of transformation that we have. Okay, because for, from the first time when you look at the graph, you might think that it is a trans translation because you can see the graph is moving. Okay, but when you try to analyze the relationship between the x value and also the y value, and you will further clarify that, oh, it is actually not a translation, but it is a stretch for this kind of question. Okay, so if can, you try to um, analyze the relationship between the original value x and y, also the later value x and y after the transformation. Then from there, you can make a simple conclusion on that. All right, so this is an example just to remind you that uh, the graph looks like translation, but actually it is not. Uh, it is a stretch in the y direction. Okay, all right. So let's continue to part C. If I have looked for this part C, also this is the original graph, and this is after transformation. They want us to state in terms of f also the equation of the graph shown in with the broken lines. Okay, so how can we compare these two? So again, these two looks very similar, right? I can say it's having the same shape. Lah. Right, so again, so I, I will suspect it is a translation. But if let's say you want to further, further clarify it, then you can try to compare all the coordinate. 2, 1. This is negative 2 and negative 2. And then this one is 3, 3. Okay, then after the transformation, it will be negative 1 and 0. Okay, this point is actually negative 3 and negative 1. Then this particular point is actually um, 1 and 2. Okay, alright, so uh, first of all, we try to compare the value of x. All the value of x are different, right? 1 become negative 3, 3 become negative 1, and then 2 become negative 2. So you try to compare. Okay, so from here until here, they are 4 units apart. Okay, then for the lowest point here until here, also 4 units apart or 4 boxes apart. Then this to this also four boxes apart. So you can see that the distance uh, before and after the uh, transformation, right? They are four units apart to the left. Okay. 
And then after that, if you try to observe the value of y, 3 become 0, 2 become negative 1, 1 become negative 2. So you can see that there are 3 units apart, okay, from the original point. So from this one and this one is 3 units lower. This one and this one also 3 units lower, okay. Then this and this also 3 units lower. Okay, so everything is shift, shifted uh, with the same value. Okay, so all the x exists, huh? all the x value is 4 units away, and then all the y values are 3 units away. So this kind of question, this kind of transformation is very clearly that we are having translation. But the translation is in two directions, huh? x exists and also the y exists. Okay, so it is 4 units to the left. This is the original, right? Original. Then this is after the transformation one. There are four units. So that means you are moving the graph four units to the left. When you want to write it in terms of function, it will be x plus 4. Okay? And then original function is on top. You are moving it downwards three units, right? Three units. So downwards three units means that when you want to write it out in the function form, it will be negative three outside the basic function. So this is the answer. You can see that there are two trans transformations involved. The first one will be uh, translation in x axis and also the translation in y axis. Okay, so this is another type of um, example. All right, how are we going to figure out the original curve, original graph with the transformed graph? All right. And again, this diagram also looks like a translation and end up it is really a translation. So you can compare part B and part C. Huh? Part B looks like a translation, but it is not. It is because of, you can see that your original graph and the graph after the transformation, right? The original graph is actually shorter. After the transformation, the graph is actually longer. Although it is also shifted, looks like shifted, but basically it is actually the stretch. Then for this one, okay, originally when you look at the graph, right, you can see that hey, the graph is shifted also or translated also. Then you try to figure out the shape. The shape of the graph is exactly the same before and after, right? It is not become longer or shorter or fatter, okay? And very likely this kind of transformation, it will be actually the translation, all right? So no matter how in exam, you need to figure it, it out lah, by yourself, all right? So just make sure that you understand Okay, what is the difference between the stretch and also the translation when they show you everything in the graph? All right, so in the exam, you need to know how to figure out all this kind of trans transformation by yourself, right? Okay, so one more example, example nine. Okay, I'm having the graph of y equals to fx and that is transformed to the graph of y equals to 3f negative x. Describe fully the two transformations which have been combined to give the resulting transformation. Okay, so highlight the keyword two. Two transformation means that you are having two, two transformation. Okay, that means you can have maybe a stretch in y axis followed by stretch in x axis, or maybe you might have stretch in y axis followed by translation in x axis or whatsoever. But they already tell you that in this transformation, they are having two transformation in it. Okay, all right, so let's have a look for the... Uh, detail, right? What do we have here? So we are multiplying a 3 outside the basic function and we multiply a negative inside the basic function. So when I multiply the negative inside the basic function, I know that this is reflection. Then when I multiply a number outside the basic function, this is stretch. Okay? Alright. Then now, what can we have here? Alright, so when we want to write out the transformation, okay, you can write like this. Maybe we start with reflection first. I multiply the negative inside the basic function so I can write it as reflection in 
this is a left right reflection right so you can write reflection in y axis okay then followed by what followed by the stretch okay so for the stretching part we multiply the three outside the basic function therefore it is a stretch parallel with the y-axis so all these are the keyword that you must show huh? and then you also need to show them what is the stretch factor so this is with a stretch factor 3 okay so you can see that there are two transformation involved okay so you can see that we are having reflection in y axis. This is the first transformation. After that, we have the stretch parallel with the y axis with a stretch factor 3. This is the second transformation. So some students might ask, um, how about if let's say I change the sequence where I start with the stretching in y direction first. Okay, so maybe some students they might want to say that oh okay I start with the stretching in y axis first, after that only followed by reflection. Is my answer still correct or not? Okay, so the answer is correct. You can write it like this or you can write it in this way. Okay, so if you are not so sure, you can try to sketch the these two these two function are uh, these two outcome uh, these two transformation these two set of answer by using a simple graph if you want you realize that no matter which one you apply first right the outcome of the graph after the transform transformation is the same okay so for here i don't want to show you that but if you are free you can just try a simple graph with the original function fx then you try to go through with this set of transformation what kind of final answer you have and also you Draw another graph, also with the same basic function. Go through with this set of answer. You realize that both answer at the end after the transformation are actually the same. Okay, and then uh, how I know that these two are the same? Basically, it's like this: uh, when you are having the transformation right in two different directions. So, as an example, this one is stretched in y, and then I'm having the reflection in x. Okay, so y and x are two different directions, right? Your transformation involves two different directions, y and x. Then no matter what kind of sequence comes first, they are, they are okay. That means their answer is the same. The sequence is not important. Okay, but when you are having the transformation purely all in y, purely all in x, right? And then the sequence will be important. We will cover this part in the next video. Alright, but for now in general, I just want to let you know first, when you're having the transformation that involves y and also the x separately, y and x, ah, they are not in the same direction, right? They are in the different direction. Okay, then the sequence of the transformation basically uh, is not important because no matter which one you write first, followed by the other one, the, the outcome is actually the same. Okay, alright. And the details and everything we will discuss in the next video. We are talking about the combined transformation in the next video. All right. Okay, so this is what we have for example 9. So let's cover the last example for this part, the stretching part, example 10. Okay, so for example 10, they give us a function also where it is something like this. And then they are telling us that we are considering the domain x greater than 0. So first part, they want you to express this expression in this form okay where a b and c are the real uh, are the positive are the integer okay so i think it's very obvious uh, for this part basically it is a completed square form right so you need to completing the square first i take out the two before i can complete the square Okay, so if I want to complete the square, I need to factorize out the 2 first, then only I start completing the square. So I can have plus something square minus something square, right? So I believe that you are very familiar with this process already. Right? So the something is taking 4 divided by 2, you get a 2, then minus 2 square, and then minus 14. Okay, then I try to 
factorize the first three terms into one bracket with a square outside. Okay, then I need to continue by multiplying the 2 for this bracket and also 2 with the term. Then I simplify it, I will have 2. Then x plus 2 squared minus 8 minus 14, you get negative 22. So this is a completed square form for this uh, quadratic expression. And we learned this technique in chapter 1 before. Okay, so I hope that you still remember how to do this. Okay, after that, they are asking, given that the function g is defined by x squared, so this is the original function, where x greater than negative 2, describe fully the sequence of transformation that maps gx to fx. Okay, so again, from gx to fx, uh, that's why I said just now the gx is the original function, x squared. So from this simple one, go to the complicated one. And then for this question, they didn't tell us how many transformations are there. They just tell us that describe fully the sequence of correct transformation. Okay, so to write out the sequence correctly, um, what can we do is, you can do it slowly. Lah, okay, so let's say I'm having the original x squared, right? Okay, I'm having the original x squared. So the next one, what I can do is like I can make it become x plus 2 squared. So I will start with this one first, huh, where I try to put it as a plus 2, then followed by what? Followed by 2, and then x plus 2 squared, multiply the 2 outside the bracket. Then lastly, maybe I try to, um, sorry, this one should be a 2, right? minus 22 as the last step here okay all right so if i follow this sequence from here i can see that this is the translation because you plus 2 inside the basic function then when you multiply the 2 okay outside the function right outside the bracket it is a stretch Okay, then you minus 22 outside the function, right? At the last step here, this is also another translation. Okay. So now, if you want to write out the transformation, right? From here, you can see that there are three here. Lah. So you can start with translation in x direction then the stretch in y direction followed by another translation in y direction if you want okay right so you can write it like this uh, um, translation in vector so you are moving it two units to the left so negative two and zero followed by stretch in y direction in y axis with a stretch factor 2 okay then followed by another translation okay in vector 0 and negative 22 okay so follow the sequence you can see that this is what we can write Okay. Can I? Yeah. So now, this is what we have like, when you are having the stretching, okay, for the function. All right. So, so far, we already learned three types of transformation, like what I mentioned earlier. We have learned translation. Okay. So we have uh, learned reflection. And we have also learned trans, uh, sorry, stretch. So mainly we are having actually three types of transformation in our syllabus. Okay, so when we are having the three types of transformation separately, right, basically it is quite simple for us to identify it. But now, uh, some students might have some, um, some confusion when they try to combine everything together. All right, as an example uh, for this one. 
for this one you can see very clearly that oh should be no problem if let's say i'm having translation followed by stretch then followed by another translation here so you're having three transformation that can be written out can be write out okay but sometimes they will ask can i tr uh, combine the two translation into one and is it the answer still correct or not okay so that means uh, now we are going to consider besides the translation here the transformation involved here right we also need to consider about the sequence of the transformation okay so for example 10 this this answer is correct answer okay just that maybe if you are uh, having question like hey should i com uh, combine these two translation together or not so that i just write it out as translation in vector negative 2 and 22 is this still correct or not okay if let's say we are allowed to write out this translation with the vector negative 2 and negative 22 right where should i put it should i put it before the stretch or should i put it after the stretch all right so now when you're having this kind of question you need to consider more about the sequence uh. besides the transformation we also need to consider about the sequence all right so for the sequence uh, in the combination of the transformation we'll discuss it more detail in the next video all right so for now just make sure that you know how to write out the basic function until the final function uh, according to the correct sequence that you know first okay so in the next video we're going to learn uh, how to combine and how to combine the translation together and then what about what is the detail about the sequence for the transformation all right so that's all for this video so we'll continue in the next video for combined transformation